mind shifters and still point breathing uh, session this weekend. We had some conversations come up in, around grief, and so I had promised that I would do a section on the emotions on grief at the beginning of this show, so that uh, the participants could be could be part of that. And I want to kind of review uh, the, the the context of emotions, which I think makes it a whole lot easier to start to move the energy behind our emotions. So recognize that if you're living from your mind, then or what what the world calls your mind, it, what what we call the mind, the resonant function of content stored in brain cells being resonated into activity is not really a mind. You know, if I say don't think about the color of your car, you know, something resonates in you, something moves in you, and people tend to call that thinking, but it really isn't thinking. We call it the mind, but it isn't. The real mind, the human mind, is the ability to hold love conscious, active, and present, no matter what moves within our physiology and to be able to bring in something new, different, and alive in the moment rather than just replicate what's already stored in the mind. If I say don't think about the color of your car, there's something stored in your mind about the color of your car and that moves. If I say, you know, what's the front door of your house look like? You've got brain cells. It's something from the past. If I say what's your favorite food, it's something from the past. Now, if I put my favorite food in my mouth and I just enjoy it, that's a present moment experience. It's alive. And the idea is for us to be alive, not just experiencing the replication of energies from the past moving in us and, and thinking that's life. So our emotions or blocked emotions that can flare up in an instant from a mind that often tyrannizes us is not living. If we're going to truly live as human beings, we need to live from the light and the love that flows underneath those experiences that the replicate mind gives us. The, the active presence of love that's designed to empower and to power the human mind. You know, if you listen to physicists, even they're saying that underneath the creation, that, that if we look at matter, it's light energy solidified. Beneath it is this world of light. And so my offering is we're designed to live from that world of light connected to, and the equivalent word or another word for that presence of light is love. So if you regularly live from a mind that tells you that you're mad or you're sad or you're afraid or you're upset because something is happening outside of you, then you're living in denial. Remember our definition of denial. When I think or speak as though something outside of me is the cause of what's moving inside of me, I'm in denial. When I'm in denial, by definition, by saying to myself, that made me mad, I have to dissociate from the real cause, the real energy, the thought disorder behind my painful experience. And when I do that, my mind has to make up a whole false world based on that errant thought, based on a thought disorder. So feeling is the sensation of an energy moving in your field. Emotions are the end result of a resonating field that comes from the impact of mind energy. If you go to the opening words in the book of John, you remember it says, in the beginning was the mind energy and the mind energy became flesh. It doesn't say in the beginning was the word. So in the beginning was the mind energy. And so my take is, my, my offering is that the way that this body-mind unit is designed is when mind energy is moving in us, of course, it has to hit a cell to be felt. And when it hits a cell, you know, much if, you, if you've ever been out, you know, driving on a country road where there are big power lines and if you stop and you get out, you hear this hum coming from the wires, well, that's kind of like emotion. 
when mind energy hits the cell and flows through into and through the cell, the same way as electricity flowing through those wires moves, that electricity flowing through these wires creates that hum. Well, emotions are nothing more than a reflection of that mind energy moving through those, those emotions, or pardon me, through those cells, and it warns us or informs us of the quality of our creative process. Now, you've heard me say it many times before, probably the greatest atrocity done to us as human beings down through the ages and that we've bought into is that we've had hidden from us the fact that we are by nature creators. And so when we lose awareness of our creative ability, our emotions, if we put them in the right context, our emotions are an information signal that informs us of the quality of our creative process, the quality of the mind energy that's flowing in our structure. And when we recognize that, then emotion becomes a whole different thing than, oh, look what they did to me, and I'm so sad or afraid or mad, and I'm hurting. Now, recognize that emotions and thoughts are kind of cooked together, and they end up looking like rage and sadness, hate, fear, depression, anxiety, and those things can't be uncooked. And most people try to figure their, their emotions out. Figuring them out is the number one pseudo solution of the non-being, non-being mind. And figuring emotions out is like trying to uncook them. It can't be done. You know, it's like a stew. Once the stew is cooked, you can't separate the carrot flavor from the celery flavor and the celery from the bay leaf. You can't do it. But as each aspect of the complex of emotion is being dealt with in any given moment, is brought to conscious awareness, exposed, focused into and changed, then that thought can be forgiven, that thought can be removed. And when that thought is removed, then the distortion that comes with it disappears. And so the conversation, as I say on on Saturday in our monthly Mind Shifters and Still Point Breathing session, which, by the way, we do it the second Saturday of every month, and if anybody would like to join that, you can do a single session, you can do a three-pack session, you can join it for the year. But the, the thing that came up on Saturday was this idea of grief. And you know, my offering is that grief is an emotional distress that's inflicted on us by the mind. As a perceptual construct, it's always a reflection of a thought disorder that functionally disconnects us from our awareness of ourselves as love. Grief includes thoughts of injustice, calamity, loss, all based on fearful interpretations of events. Remember, when the fear filter is set in the mind, the only quality of perceptual construct the mind can give you is something that is threatening. Now, my offering is that every event comes to deliver us a gift. But when the gift is interpreted through fear, you know, think of something that maybe happened to you 20, 30, 40 years ago. And when it happened, it was a big trauma, terror, oh, upset, oh, how terrible it was. And you look back at it now and you go, wow, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Well, it was one of the best things that happened to you. At the time that it happened, why did somebody wait 20 years to get its gift? Because they were stuck in thought disorders, misinterpreting it, not understanding it. So when these events that come into our lives, we say, I'd rather that didn't happen, and they're interpreted through fear, the mind keeps us stuck in that situation of this is a threat. And when we wake up to different possibilities, then a whole different process occurs. Oftentimes, grief comes up around the experience of death. 
And it's interesting, in the Aramaic language, the word death means present elsewhere. Let's say you went to a store to see Bill, and Mary was there, and Bill was in their other store. If Mary were Aramaic, she might say, well, Bill is dead. doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. It means he is present elsewhere. If we think that death is an end, we get stuck in a thought disorder of loss and endings and, you know, whatever complexes are there. So the objective here would be to step into the forgiveness process, surface and and confront, bring forward the thought disorder that needs healing so that the emotion that we're experiencing will come from our true mind, that is, from the ability to hold love conscious, active and present, rather than from the disorders that, thought disorders that tend to be generational. They're things that tend, tend to get passed from generation to generation to generation. And you remember the mind shifter tool. And so, remember a mind shifter is a thought about an issue in your life around which you have negative thoughts and it's the opportunity to surface, process, and release the negative thoughts, to forgive. It's the opportunity to move those things. So the way that a mind shifter is used is that, and I'm going to share a mind shifter around this idea of grief in just a moment, but the way a mind shifter is used is you take a piece of paper and you write the mind shifter on one side of the page, and then you write everything that comes up in response to it on the opposite side of the page. And the idea is to use that mind shifter as a catalyst. You know, in the same way as if I say, don't think about the color of your car, I set up a frequency with my voice that when it hits your eardrum, creates an electrochemical shift inside of you and resonates brain cells related to car. And so those brain cells start to fire. When we use a mind shifter that keys into a thought disorder or a thought complex, that is based in disordered thinking, then the mind shifter allows you to start to resonate that particular thought disorder and allow it to come to the surface in a context that's safe and to process through that thought disorder. So the mind shifter that we'll offer here if you've got your pen and paper ready. If grief surfaces, I remember my true nature. I breathe. as I bring love present in my mind. And heal. All thought disorders related to loss. So once again, the mind shift around grief. If grief surfaces, I remember my true identity. Breathe. as I bring love present to my mind and heal all thought disorders related to loss. And and healing them doesn't mean figuring them out. Healing means 
bringing them forward in the presence of active love. And when you write a mind shifter, and if, if grief is an issue in your life, I suggest you take a few hours, two, three hours, maybe even four if it's an important issue, and you spend time writing that mind shifter. And then once you – and and just, you know, make sure the phone is off. Make sure in your own space, secured, you're, you're not going to be disturbed. And you just write and write and write whatever surfaces. When you run out of things to write in response to that mind shifter, then write it again. And you might write the mind shifter two, three, four, five times before thoughts start to flow again. And the idea is to get the – the thought disorders, and most people, when thought disorders start to move in them, they hold their breath, and that is what locks those energetic patterns into tissue. That's the kind of thing that results in, you know, we talked a few weeks ago about sympathetic dominance. Thought disorders based in fear and loss tend to put people, when they're active, tend to put people into a state of sympathetic dominance where the fear, flight, fright, freeze, and fawning mode of operating physiologically and with the mind takes over. And when that occurs, especially with the long-term sort of thing, when that becomes, or if that becomes chronic, then people tend to get stuck in a place where blood flow is continuously shunted to the larger muscles and to the energy flow to the lungs to allow breath to be used and, you know, to empower us to fight, struggle, run, escape. It can also lead to going into freeze mode because it cuts off blood flow literally to the higher centers of the brain. And so moving those thought disorders, those thought energies out, tends to take the the signal out of the muscle fibers that shut down the blood flow to the parts of the structure that are built to thrive, regenerate, heal, rest, reproduce, tends to open those muscle fibers and allow the restoration of blood flow to the rest of the structure rather than you know, those who've lived in chronic hostility and fear uh, tend to be locked into that mode where the blood is shunted to the larger muscles, you know, skeletal muscles ready to fight and run and to the lungs. So it's an important part of the healing process. So once again, if grief surfaces, I remember my true identity. I breathe. as I bring love present to my mind and heal all thought disorders related to loss. 